In today's video, I am talking about the top 11 events that are happening in Park City, Utah, and a few of the very, very close surrounding areas. So whether you're watching this video for this year, next year, or the next year, you can rest assured that the majority of these events take place every single year, and they are definitely the top events that draw visitors and tourists and locals from all over. So whether you have planned your trip here, just planned your trip, or have never even been to Park City, Utah, or you're a local resident, you're definitely going to want to pay attention. The first event that is happening in Park City, Utah is obviously Park City Mountains Opening Day, which is happening this week, November 17th. Now, the amount of snow we have outside is a little bit frightening because we don't have a lot of snow. It's very lackluster right now. We had a big storm last week, which was fun. It was like, yes, but now it's warm again. So last year, if you don't know, we had like the most incredible season we've ever had. Utah had the most snowfall it's ever had. Alta got over like 900 inches. Like it was absolutely insane. It was crazy. It was awesome. And usually, because I'm a local, I've lived here for 37 years, when it snows early, like early October or like the end of uh, end of September, I'm always nervous. I'm like, great. That means we're going to have a late start to the season because it usually gets warm and dries out by the time the ski resort's actually open. But what happened last year was it started snowing at the beginning of, beginning of October and it never stopped. It stayed cold and it snowed until June. Like we didn't even have a summer. Like May was snowy. I skied till May 1st last year. So hopefully we're having a, hopefully we have another good season. We have a definitely a late start um, to the season and we need more snow. Solitude is open. It has a four inch base. <clears throat> Yikes. Four inch base. Link was open. So they opened this weekend, but Link is like their baby chair. It's like their beginner chair. So it's like Park City opening and saying, we're opening um, High Meadow. <laughs> or we're opening first time, which is kind of scary. So we're going to be skiing on the white ribbon of death. It's going to be um, all man-made, I think, because I don't know if any storms are in the forecast. I haven't checked the weather yet, but you can check skiutah.com, parkcitymountainresort.com, deervalley.com, wherever you want to ski. Um, and they will have updates about terrain statuses and when they plan on opening, If hopefully, fingers crossed, um, nobody has to delay their opening. So the next one is Deer Valley's opening day, which they are opening December 2nd. They always open December 2nd. Last year, they just happened to not open December 2nd because we had so much snow. And it was like the first time in like decades and decades and decades that Deer Valley opened up early. Deer Valley always has generally a very good opening. They have a very good snowmaking system over there. And that's why they're always ranked in the top you know, in Top and Ski Magazine because they wait a little bit to open the hill so they can get more runs open. So there is not a white ribbon of death situation. And they actually have a good base and good grooming so that people can really rip it on the hill and enjoy it. The third one is the Park City Electric Parade. This happens on Main Street. Last year it happened around December 3rd, you could always check historic Main Street or visit parkcity.com or you could just Google like Park City Electric Parade. They haven't announced the date for this yet. This is more fun than the 4th of July parade to me. People dress up their cars. Everybody decks out everything in lights. The trolleys and lights. People are in Santa suits, elf suits. They're all dressed up. The Santa beer pub crawl is like right before this. So everybody is just schmammogrammed on Main Street. Um, it is so much fun and it is chilly. So make sure you dress warm. It is a family friendly event. So don't think that everybody's just schmammogrammed. But I mean, people are, you know, going to this and then going to the beer, the, the pub crawl. So everybody's dressed up in their holiday fun outfits, their crazy suits, candy cane, ugly sweaters, whatever you want. Anything goes. Um, the more festive, the more fun. What I know about Park City is that people freaking love to dress up. They love to have a good time. So it's really fun people watching and it's a really short little parade. It's not very long. Um, and it's really cute. Some people are on bicycles that have lights on their bicycles, scooters, rollerblades, whatever it is, if there's not snow on the ground or ice. But um, yeah, and people are just cruising down with like reindeer ears on, a Santa hat, whatever. It is such so much fun. It's such a good time. It's on Main Street. I definitely recommend going and checking it out. The next one is obviously Sundance Film Festival. It happens at the end of January, the last 
It lasts for two weeks. So it's going from January 18th to the 28th. I personally think the first opening weekend is like the most fun on Main Street. It tends to die down a little bit um, towards the last weekend, but because they always have like opening parties. So like the first week is always definitely a lot busier. All the good parties are happening. This is also the time, like if you want to book a trip and come here, like booking a trip during Sundance, it's harder to find lodging. Yes. Lodging might be more expensive. Yes. Because you have all the sun dancers in town here for the movies and all of Hollywood are here in town, but the slopes are beautiful. Like nobody's skiing. Like this is the time to enjoy your mountain. It's when the locals are like, yes, our mountain, we have it back again. So I love to ski during the Sundance Film Festival simply because there's no crowds, there's no lines, and it's super fun. And then there's also so much to do in town. There's parties everywhere. There's awesome sightseeing. There, I mean, I love the fashion of Sundance. Like the fashion of Sundance is the best. Park City is a place where people just like don't dress up. Like nobody dresses up. Like you will never see someone in a cocktail dress at the grocery store, right? Like ever. Everybody's very casual in their Lululemons, in their Patagonia, in their like Coca Paxi, whatever. Um, I mean, they're four hundred dollar running shorts from Backcountry, right? I mean, this is not a place where you see lots of Parada and like Chanel and all these designer brands. I guess you kind of see like designer mountain brands in a way, because yes, there are four hundred dollar running shorts on Backcountry.com. So yeah, I mean, there's like bougie outdoor brands, but you know what I love about Sundance is like, I love fashion. I love fashion. I love New York fashion. I love fashion week. And it brings in all the fashion people and their great boots and their purses and their fur coats and their earrings and their panthers on their fingers. I mean, I love it. It is the best people watching. And um, I make some really good friends on the bus too. Last year, I met a Hollywood director riding the bus from Park City Mountain Resort. He was actually staying at the Canyons Village and he had just got done seeing a movie. So you never know who you're going to meet on the bus. Always be friendly. Always be kind because, I mean, I met a Hollywood director who had a movie, who, who like they had a movie, they had a Sundance movie and we were just sitting next to each other on the bus and we happened to start talking and um, he was really cool, really, really cool dude. So you never know who you're going to meet. Um, it's fun. So I highly recommend the Sundance Film Festival, but definitely book your lodging early because it can get really, really expensive and it might be very, very difficult to find a place to actually rent out. This is like prime time for owners who have short-term rentals and vacation rental properties like Airbnbs, VRBOs, anybody that owns an investment property. This is like the time that they are getting mega bucks for their, um, for their rentals. Like some people will close down their shop on main street just for a main street event happening. Like somebody for the Sundance film festival. And I mean, they could make a hundred, 200 grand like for both weeks, or, you know, they could charge $10,000 a night. I mean, it's absolutely crazy what people charge here and what people are willing to pay during Sundance. It's crazy, you know, but if you're coming here to ski and you don't want to be paying like $10,000 a night for ski and ski out. Yeah. Um, then book early next up on the list is, Oh, the good old tradition of the Salt Lake city temple lights. Um, yes, this is happening in downtown Salt Lake. Downtown Salt Lake is magical in itself during Christmas. And if it's snowing, it's even better. But the temple lights are absolutely beautiful. You're probably about a 30 to 35 minute drive. So if you want to get out of Park City for a little bit, this is definitely something I highly recommend seeing. They start November 25th at 5 p.m. And they'll go, you know, all the way until I think like, I'm not sure when they end. I'd have to check on that. But um Another fun, magical place to walk around downtown is City Creek Center. That is really fun during Christmas. Um, oh my gosh, when I was a kid, I remember going to the department stores with my mom, like Nordstrom's, Macy's, Dillard's, like such a good time. Not to mention like if you like nicer um, shopping, like if you're looking for like Louis Vuitton and like those nicer stores, there is a Louis Vuitton store at City Creek. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, there's also like, a forever 21 if you're like a forever 21 type person right so there's there's different shops for everybody but 
It's definitely so fun and so magical during the holidays. There's also the Gallivan Center down in Salt Lake, which has awesome ice skating. So it's a huge ice skating ring. So there's a lot of fun activities that happen in downtown Salt Lake. So you have to think that Park City is a bedroom community to Salt Lake. So if there's, you know, you kind of like aren't finding any really anything you want to do down in Park City while you're here, like always make sure you're checking out Salt Lake and also Heber. Heber has some really fun, fun stuff happening too. All right, the FIS World Cup. This is like huge deal up here. So I am telling you that everybody takes the bus to this event. This is dual moguls. This is aerials. This happens on the championship course up at Deer Valley. Dual moguls is literally the best event you could ever watch. It is so fun. These guys are flying down the mountain. They're flipping. They're going over the bumps, the moguls, like my whole family, like my husband, my sister-in-law, they were all like mogul skiers. My sister-in-law actually competed in it. So she's really good. And she did like backflips and all this stuff. And so they all started out mogul skiing. And so they are like a group of ripping skiers. And um, then my husband went on to teach like freestyle and park and pipe and stuff like that when it started to get really cool. And like now it's like a big thing. But before like freestyle was a big thing and the rails and the half pipe and the slope style was a big thing. Um, it was moguls and aerials and like ski racing, right? Like your traditional foundational elements of skiing. Like I always say that ballet is the foundational, um, is the foundation of all dance. I feel like if you, if you can, if you can master moguls, if you can master ski racing, and then you jump into like park and slope style and backcountry skiing, oh my gosh, they're like such foundational elements. You're going to be a ripping, ripping skier. And these guys are world-class athletes at what they do. Um, it's really, really fun to watch. And the aerials are insane. The jump is like this big and they like go flying off of it and they put their arms like this and then they spin and twirl and like, it's like gymnastics on skis basically. And they have very special skis for it. It's so much fun to watch. It happens every, it happens every February, the first through the third it's up at Deer Valley. You will never find parking. So I highly recommend getting something, booking it close to Deer Valley, booking it close to main street, um, or getting on the bus route because the parking is what's a night. What it, I mean, this is like a massive crowd. This draws a massive crowd and the buses are always full. Like there are so many people on the bus that everybody's standing, like holding the bar. So this is a popular event and you want to plan ahead. Next one is the ice castles in Midway. There is also a tubing hill in Midway at Soldier Hollow. The ice castles are really, really fun. They usually as long as they have the snow and it's cold enough, they usually open sometime in January and you can go to their website, but it feels like you're in a little Disney movie. And if you go at night, it's freezing cold. They do sell like hot chocolate and they have some like food there. It's not very healthy food. Um, I definitely recommend wearing like snow boots because it's like you're walking on snow and I've seen people like ladies in high heels walking around the ice castles. And I'm like, are you insane? what are you wearing? You're going to die in the snow. Like your heel is going to, every step you take, you're going to sink, you're going to twist your ankle. So wearing good clothes, dressing warm, you know, you can still look cute in winter gear. I do it all the time. So the ice castles are really fun, especially if you have kids younger, you know, if you're bringing a family, I highly, highly, highly recommend the ice castles because it's just cool. Like I don't know how they do it. Sometimes they have slides, like it lights up. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's like, it's so much fun. The next one is Ballet West. Woo! Um, amazing. This happens all throughout December. I'm actually going December 24th, Christmas Eve with my parents and my husband. I freaking love the Nutcracker. It is a tradition. So if you're here during that time, it happens at the Capitol Theater, which is also down in Salt Lake. Parking can be a bit of um, hard down there. So just really kind of researching parking areas. There is a parking area next to Capitol Hill. It was like 24 bucks when we went to Dracula. I go to the ballet a lot. I love the ballet. Used to be a dancer for 23 years, taught it in Park City for 15. So I freaking love dance. Utah is like one of the best places for dance and the arts in, in the world. Like with the people that you see on So You Think You Can Dance, like dancing with the stars, all of the, a major, like 80% of those people 
trained in Utah. They grew up in Utah, like Derek Huff, Julia Huff, um, Jenna. I'm trying to think of all the girls. Like there's Riley's on there. Her sister Lindsay used to be on there. I mean, I'm telling you, like they all come from Utah. There is something in Utah where it just has amazing dance training. So I definitely highly recommend if you're into it and you want that traditional aspect, go check out the ballet. This one is the snow globe stroll. This is completely free. It happens November 25th. It's going to run through January 1st. This is another fun little activity, great little Instagram moment, little social media post. Like when you're walking around on main street, doing the touristy things, or just like going to dinner with the family or taking like friends and family that are in town to main street, like the snow globe stroll is really, really fun. Now, if you're looking for more things to do, make sure you go check out this video next.